The Boston Red Sox may not be the best team in baseball this year, but they sure do own the Toronto Blue Jays. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and this 2023 Boston Red Sox team is one of the weirdest baseball teams I've ever watched, right? They go from losing five games in a row, it feels like the bottom's falling out from under you, and then all of a sudden you go into Toronto on Canada weekend, and you sweep the Blue Jays in three straight games, right? It's just absolutely bizarre. And the storyline of this series has to be the Red Sox offense that, after being dead silent for a pretty decently long period of time they absolutely crushed a couple of pretty good blue jays pitchers and of course in this series it wouldn't be a red sox victory without some impending sense of dread with another rotation injury so what we're going to do in today's videos we're going to break it all down we're going to go over the latest red sox series talk about the latest red sox highlights talk about the latest possible red sox injuries and we are going to talk about how this series could affect the 2023 season but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red Sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it obviously it makes perfect sense to start by talking about and highlighting the offense in this series and the series mvp in my opinion has to go to jaron duran who in the last game of this series ended up going five for five and tying a franchise high with four total doubles he also had a home run in this series and overall throughout the entire series he ended up going six for 11 i think i'm at the point now i need to see jaron duran in the ball game every single day right i love adam duvall and i think he could be a factor for this Red Sox team but Jaron Duran represents what I'm going to be really paying attention to for the rest of the 2023 season and that's what can these young pieces do to develop themselves into centerpieces for the next great Red Sox team and Jaron Duran's doing exactly that I need to see him playing every single day I don't want him platooning with Duvall I want him playing every single game but either way he had a fantastic series in this one and Rafael Devers also had a great series he was actually really close from in my opinion for being the series MVP he ended up having a bit of a rough first game but in the second game he had a double a home run and a couple of RBIs then in the third game he went three for three with three hard hit balls as well as two walks and two RBIs Rafael Dever is breaking back out in a big way and I talked about it before but this offense looks completely different when you have Rafael Devers hitting his stride right it becomes a much more dangerous offense and it's what exactly what we saw in this series is it really does take on a new personality and a new way of hurting pitchers right it really does look like a completely different team when Rafael Devers is healthy and it looks like he is back and better than ever Justin Turner also had another really good series it's pretty much the same thing as we say every series right he had a hit in every single game a home run in two out of three of these games an RBI in every single game as well you really can't ask for much more out of the DH spot right now I see some people talking about oh I'd rather have J JD Martinez or then Justin Turner. Listen, JD Martinez isn't going to do what he's doing in LA in Boston, right? Justin Turner has brought such depth and such diversity to this Red Sox lineup, and he's absolutely perfect at the heart of it. This dude is Mr. Consistent. He is just a flat out professional hitter, and this is a guy I want in the middle of my lineup. Masataki Yoshida continues to hit the ball fairly well, although he did have an unfortunate ending in this series. But before that happened, he went three for four in the first game of this series with a solo blast to right field he then went th two for three in the second game with an rbi as well he absolutely owns the toronto blue jays which i find pretty funny actually because they were the first they were the top suitors right out of the gate for masataki yoshida then the red sox kind of swooped in and took it over but before that it was looking like masataki yoshida was going to be a toronto blue jay so it's just funny that after signing with a completely different team he absolutely crushes them but Unfortunately for Masataki Yoshida, his series was cut short when he was hit in the calf with a 101 mile an hour fastball. Now, he was taken out of the game, but the good news in all this is that x-rays were negative. There weren't any breaks. There weren't any tears. He just sort of has a really nasty bruise, and that should keep him out for a little bit, but it's not going to deter him from being out for too, too long. I'm hoping we get a 
appearance from Masataki Yoshida in this Texas Rangers series. But either way, a really good series for Masataki Yoshida before going down. And finally, Alex Verdugo had a really, really quiet series at the plate, but he was the dagger in the final game of the series, hitting a home run, an absolute shot off of the Toronto closer, Jordan Romano, his second of the year off of the Toronto closer in the ninth inning of that game. And in the second game, he threw out the winning run at home and put the dagger in Toronto in that game as well. So Alex Verdugo was kind of doing it on both sides of the field. Again, he did really struggle kind of overall in the batter's box in this series, but he was a key contributor to each of the Boston Red Sox wins. So I had to put him on this highlight reel somewhere and in the offensive category felt like the best part. Overall, you had a ton of production from the top half of this Red Sox lineup that is really one of the most dangerous in baseball when they are fully healthy and all cooking at the same time, right? When you have an entire series where you've got Jaron Aran leading off, you've got Doogie in the two hole, Justin Turner three, Devers four, and Massa five, that's where you're looking at a really, really deep and dangerous start first half of the lineup. I will say that the second half of the lineup did struggle a bit in this series, and that's something that simply can't be a trend going forward but overall i mean the red sox just absolutely offensively crush the toronto blue jays they have a 992 ops against toronto in this season and that's over seven games it's been absolutely insane it's like they just turn it on against the toronto blue jays but either way i think yeah the top part of this lineup was absolutely fantastic we know that this offense is really really streaky so let's hope that this is the start of a hot streak because the boston red sox are going to need a lot of offense over the next couple of days because of what is happening on the pitching side of the baseball but again I do want to give my props to the Red Sox offense I don't know if watching them do what they did in this series changes my entire outlook on the 2023 season but it is really really nice to finally have them playing at least competitive baseball right that's kind of all we were asking for at the beginning of the season hey I just want to be competitive I just want to have fun watching this game and over the last five games you didn't get that, especially offensively where you scored what? Over those last five games, you scored five total runs, right? In this series, you scored every single game. You had big games from someone in every single game, and that made it fun to watch. It made it heart racing, right? The bottom of the ninth where Alex Verdugo throws out Bo Bichette at the plate, or the top of the ninth in the third game where Alex Verdugo hits a leadoff home run to put the Red Sox up by one. Those were exciting games, and it was a, felt like the first time we were watching exciting games, and a pretty long time so shout out to the Red Sox offense in this one and again they're gonna need it because the pitching problems right now are starting to pile up the starting pitching in this series was actually really really good unfortunately it is being overshadowed right now by the third game injury but before we talk about that let's go through the starting pitchers James Paxton had another dominant start he went seven and two-thirds innings allowing just three total hits no earned runs and striking out seven against a lefty mashing lineup this is really really impressive Paxton's ERA is down below three on the year at 2.90 and I know people either think he's getting traded or want him to get traded and I get that idea but I absolutely love watching what James Paxton's been able to do in this rotation and for this Red Sox team I think he's an absolute blast to watch in a Red Sox uniform and honestly I would hate to see him traded but overall another really really great start in a really really great year for James Paxton Cutter Crawford got the ball in game two and he did really well in this one as well he ended up going five and two-thirds innings allowing just three hits unfortunately two of those hits were tanks right but he was able to strike out five and he did only earn those two runs cutters really gonna need to step up here with the rotation looking really shaky cutter has had his ups and downs in the rotation going forward cutter Crawford's gonna need to step into a more reliable type role and it's because of the third game where Garrett Whitlock technically got the start but he only made it about 18 pitches in the first inning before he was taken out for the rest of the game he ended up leaving the game with right elbow elbow issues which is never a good sign after the game Alex Cora mentioned that it felt like to him and to uh, Garrett Whitlock that it was exactly like the injury that he sustained earlier in the year where he was out about 15 total days that's sort of what we're looking at again with Garrett Whitlock he is getting MRIs today so I should have an update for you guys there but that is 
pretty fairly detrimental to this Red Sox rotation that is now down to just three total starters, right? Because it's pretty obvious Garrett Whitlock's going to spend some time on the IL. The amount of time yet, we don't know, but it's going to be really, really tricky for this Red Sox team con to continue to continuously win games like they did this last weekend when you don't really have a rotation, right? Nick Pavetta, I guess, is an option. You've got a couple of guys in AAA that you could probably pull up. Shane Drohan, for those of you who I know are going to try and say, bring the kids up is not ready for major league baseball so it's going to be a really interesting discussion when we get news on garrett whitlock but for now that's sort of where we're at is the red sox rotations in a bit of shambles as for the bullpen in this series it was pretty good i mean you got chris martin who's been an absolute beast for you lately he is one of the best relievers in major league baseball he has a like a one six er right now he came into two of two of the three of these games and absolutely shut down the eight inning just an absolutely fantastic appearance from chris martin nick pavetta again i gotta shout him out he kind of did really really well and he was really really clutch when garrett whitlock went down i probably guessing he's gonna end up back in the rotation pretty soon here but he's been really great out of this red Sox bullpen kenley got you two saves technically in this series right was it really pretty absolutely not but at the end of the day a win is a win josh winkowski we got to talk about too who has been really struggling lately he's had a lot of problems keeping the ball out of the sort of power zone with hitters right his location is just not what it's been lately and i honestly think they're gonna have to start limiting josh winkowski to a three out maybe four or five out type pitcher i don't think they could keep using him as a full two two three inning type pitcher he just simply does not have this capacity to do that over the entirety of an entire season so if the red sox are able to limit his appearances and limit where he is seen he might be an effective pitcher again but if they continue to use him as a two inning three inning type guy i could see those numbers regressing pretty steadily over the last couple of months of this season but again overall the red sox pitching staff did pretty well in this series and overall, in terms of the series as a whole, it was fantastic. Like I said, it was fun to watch this Red Sox team this weekend, and that's something we really have not said a ton over the month of June. And on top of that, too, it's absolutely fantastic to watch them beat up on a team that has tortured you over the last couple of years, right? Last year, they absolutely crushed you now you go in and you still haven't lost a game to the toronto blue jays it's a lot of fun to watch does it change my outlook all that much on the 2023 red sox at this point after like i said in our last video the red sox have hit rock bottom and that's kind of where i'm at for the rest of the 2023 season not too much but i do love when the red sox play fun baseball and i hope they can continue to do that and at least give us competitive baseball and the offense was absolutely fantastic in this series which is something we haven't been able to say again a lot in june so hopefully they can catch a hot streak and continue to hit really really well because they're going to need it with the state of this red sox rotation but that's just my opinion so let me know in the comment section down below what did you guys think of all this what do you think of the latest red sox series does it change your outlook on the 2023 season and what did you think of the red sox offense coming back to life a little bit let me know all your thoughts on the latest red sox series in the comment section down below as always if you made it to the end of this video do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well it helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one and i will see you in the red seats